Here are some electrical wires. Have you ever wondered why the inside is always made of copper or some kind of metal, whereas the outside is made of plastic? Well, why don't we engineer it the other way? Why don't we have plastic on the inside and copper on the outside? Well, stay tuned till the end of this video to find out. Okay, to understand this, we've got to know about electrical conductors and insulators, electrical insulators. Electrical conductors are materials that allow current to pass through, whereas electrical insulators are materials that do not allow electrical current to pass through them. Now, how do we test if a particular object, say, let's say I have an object in my hand, how do I test if this is a conductor or an insulator? Let's do a simple test. Okay, so let's say I have a cell and I connect the cell to a lamp through some wires, but I leave a small gap here between these two wires. And do you think if I left a gap like this, this bulb would light up? Of course not. Well, electric current would not be able to pass through the wire because there's a break in the circuit, right? The circuit is not completed, right? Because electric current cannot pass through air. Okay, so, but what if I placed a conducting material, let's say I place a coin here, a metallic coin, do you think now electric current would be able to pass through the wires? Yes, of course. Well, now we'll notice that the electric lamp would be lighted up and electric current would be passing through the wires and through this conductor, right? And on the other hand, if I place some kind of insulator here, it's obvious, right, that electric current cannot pass through the wires because this insulator is blocking the circuit from getting completed. This insulator will not allow electric current to pass through it, and so the circuit would not get completed, and the bulb would not glow, right? Okay, now let's try this out in a simulator, okay? So this is the PHET circuit simulator. The link to the simulator is in the description below. I'd encourage you to go and try it out. Okay, let me show you how it works. On the left-hand side, we have a lot of different components. We can click and drag these components, and then we can play with them. So here is my cell. I'm going to recreate the same circuit. I brought a wire in. You can extend the length of these wires by just clicking and dragging them. I place a light bulb here. Great. It's really simple. It's really fun and simple. I'd encourage you to try it out. There you go. We're almost done. Great. Okay. So here we are with the circuit with the cell, the lamp, wires, and some gap here. Obviously, when there's a gap, the electric bulb is not glowing. Right? What if I placed a conducting wire in between this gap? Of course, the moment I place a conducting wire, the lamp starts to glow and electrons start to flow. Right? But what if instead of this wire, I placed, let's say, let's say some other conducting material. Let's say I took this coin. Okay? What do you think would happen if I took this coin and placed it here? Wow! Even with this coin, the electrons are flowing and the light is glowing on the bulb, right? This is so cool. Okay, now let me remove this coin. To, so to remove anything, all you need to do is click on the object and then go to delete and you can remove it. Let's, let's say I play something else. Let's say I take this eraser. What do you think would happen if I place the eraser? Think about it. I'd like you to predict the result of this. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. Let me take this eraser and attach it to the wire. The moment I do it, nothing happens, right? The electrons are not moving and the bulb is also not glowing, right? Okay, so that means that this eraser is an insulator, right? Okay, so let's, let's try something else. Let's try, this is fun, isn't it? Let's try this paper clip. A paper clip is made of metal. Most probably it's going to conduct electricity, right? What do you think? Okay, let's try it out. So I connect the paper clip and bingo, this light bulb is glowing and the electrons are flowing. Amazing. Okay, I'd, I'd encourage you to try with uh, all the things present here. Maybe you can try on your own with the dollar bill. That would be a fun experiment too. Let's check what else is there. Okay, let's try with this pencil. So this pencil is basically made of graphite and it's this graphite is covered with wood, right? The insides are made of graphite. Now what I'm going to do is connect the graphite in the middle of the circuit. So there you go. Wow. This time, if you notice, the electrons are flowing, but they're flowing much slower. 
and the light is glowing, but it's not that bright, right? Let me let me show you how it was with the coin. Let's let's remove this and go back to placing the coin. Wow. Notice, notice that the electrons are flowing much faster and the light is much brighter, right? But when I bring in this pencil, the basically the graphite of the pencil or the lead as we colloquially call it, let's join it. Notice, the electrons are flowing, but they're pretty slow. It's not stationary like it was with the eraser, right? And, and the bulb is glowing, but it's not that bright. Interesting, isn't it? So what, can, what do you think we can conclude out of this? Which do you think is a better conductor, the coin or the graphite of the pencil? Well, of course, since the coin had electrons flowing much faster and the light much brighter, that kind of suggests that the coin is a better conductor, isn't it? This, this, uh, I, I really enjoy this simulation. You guys should go and try it on your own. There are lots of other things you can try as well. You can maybe try to throw in a switch or something else. Go, go ahead, play with it, have fun. Okay, let's get back to our video now. Now that we have an idea of what electrical conductors and insulators are, let's go ahead, go ahead and look at some examples. So let's begin with examples of conductors. The most common example is metals. Almost all metals are electrical conductors. Copper, aluminium, iron, um, most of the metals are conductors. Okay. And another example that we looked at was graphite. That's the lead of the pencil, as we call it. That is also a conductor. Not as good as these metals, but it still is a conductor. Okay. What about examples of insulators? Plastic is an insulator. Rubber is an insulator. Another example is bakelite. You may wonder what this is. Well, the Bakelite is the stuff that switches, electrical switches and switchboards are made of. Okay, back to our original question. Why is copper on the inside and plastic on the outside? Well, copper is a conductor, right? And plastic is an insulator. We want copper to carry the electricity, right? And we want the insulator to kind of protect the copper. Why do we need to protect the copper? Well, uh, think of it. Let's say electricity is flowing through this wire, this copper wire, and I place my hand on the copper wire. What do you think would happen? Of course, I would get a shock, right? And I don't want that to happen. And, to, and thus, to protect ourselves from the electric shock, we place a plastic piece on top of the wire. The other reason why we place a plastic piece on top of the wire is that so that two copper wires don't touch each other. And the current in this copper wire doesn't get mixed up with the current in this copper wire. So remember, if there's current flowing through the copper wire, you can touch the outside, the plastic outside part of the copper wire, but do not touch the copper part. Right? That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.